So today movie is my attempt to do something to document Two Day Town. So it occurred to me in 2017, we were up at Two Day Town and um, I'd, I'd done some movie making before in my, in my uh, childhood and early adulthood. And I, I feel like I'm a little bit of a storyteller sometimes. And it occurred to me that somebody ought to make a documentary about Two Day Town and if some, why not me? So I had this idea that quickly came to call Two Day Movie, which was supposed to be a, a music documentary, a rockumentary, if you will, as Marty DeBerge would say, um, about Two Day Town. And so <laughs> I thought about it in 2017. I said, okay, great, in 2018, I'm gonna make that movie. 2018 rolled around and I just hadn't got my stuff together and I wasn't ready to make it. But I said, okay, 2019, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that movie. And I was, I was planning it, I was getting some things together, but then 2019 was the not two day town year. And I said, okay, well, 2020 for sure, I'm gonna make that movie. And then of course that didn't happen and didn't happen in 2021. And then so by golly, I said, I'm gonna make that movie in 2022. And that's what, in a nutshell, that's what, that's the idea behind two day movie. Who's the story for? Uh, two audiences, I think. So uh, the main audience always has been from the inception of the movie is the two-day town crowd, the people that go up there. Some of them buy a ticket. Some of them get a ticket for volunteering. But there's a, a core set of people that go up there every year. And then every year, there's always a set of new people who go there. And I, I have yet to meet one that went the first time and didn't say, I, I have to come here every year. So there's this group of people that kind of evolves over time, but they're there every year. And a lot of this is for them. I just want them, right? It's not Woodstock and this movie's not Woodstock, but I watched the movie Woodstock and you feel like you were there again, or if you weren't there, you feel like I, I wanna be there. And as a storyteller, I hope that I can convey that to these people that for a moment you feel like you're there, or if you haven't been, you wish you were and you want to be there. And that's largely the audience for it. But there's another audience of people who've never heard of Two Day Town. Uh, maybe they don't even live around here. Maybe they can come to Two Day Town. Maybe they can't. But there is a set of people that I, I am hoping to reach and uh, help them understand whether it's Two Day Town or whatever their situation is, whatever Camelot's a metaphor for. Uh, you have to think about it and you have to not be complacent that it's just gonna keep happening. And if you want it to move forward, you have to get involved, you have to do something. Maybe it's something small, maybe it's something big, but you can't just sit back and, and hope that it happens every year. Yeah, but like what, is, what are you trying to document? It evolved over the years. So in 2017, when I first thought about this, I thought about, oh, somebody should make a, a music documentary about this. I didn't have a very well-developed concept of the storyline there. I just wanted to convey the vibe of Two Day Town, tell a little bit about the history, a little bit about what goes on behind the scenes, but have people who'd been there before feel for a minute like they were at Two Day Town and have people who'd never been there feel like, I, I wanna go, I, I wish I'd been there. And you know, that was kind of the story that I wanted to tell. Over time, and especially when we didn't have Two Day Towns and uh, 2020, 21 rolled around. And then uh, a thing that people should know is in 2022, uh, some of the same issues that put the kibosh on 2019 were still there. They didn't get resolved. They just got put on the back burner because of COVID. And there were still unresolved issues. And, and even up to 10 days before the festival happened this year, there were still questions about whether it was going to go on. So I have a different story and, uh, and by the way, a lot of things have happened in the world where I think Two Day Town is sort of a metaphor for those things, but the world has changed so dramatically in the last few years. And uh, so the story that I wanted to tell has grown. I still mostly want to tell the story of what about a beautiful thing Two Day Town is and show the music and show people having a good time. But there's, there's other things that I want to say now in telling the story of, of Two Day Town. So why? Why, why is Two Day Town 2023 not a foregone conclusion? Um, well, as we speak, I have not 
talk again. I'm not on the two day town board. I do know them. I I get to you know sit in and talk to them sometime. But as we speak, I have not talked to anyone from the board about the aftermath of 2022. Um, I know that from the park's perspective, um, the festival was kind of on probation and was can we hold this festival and do it in a way, and their concerns are that it be safe and that people have an opportunity to, to avail themselves to the park in the way the park is intended. And, and so did that happen in a way that they're comfortable with? And I haven't talked to anyone yet, so I, as we speak, I don't know for sure that in 2023, uh, the, the board can get a permit to hold Two Day Town again. Even if it happens in 2023, what about 2024? What about 2025? Right, it, it's going to contain or require constant attention on both sides and a will to find middle ground that everyone can live with in order for this thing to go on. Let's assume for a sec, today, town 2023 happens, maybe even years, many of them. Right. Like, whatever. Well, so uh, certainly for me, the main thing is that the festival go on. I mean, it's just, it's, got a life of its own. I believe that it's it's an important part of the live music scene in Livermore. I don't think Two Day Town would be what it is if there wasn't all this live music that goes on in Livermore. And I don't think that live music scene in Livermore would be the same if it wasn't for Two Day Town. They just support each other and they make each other better. So the important thing is for the festival to continue and to be what it is, uh, to drive live music, to satisfy an appetite for people to go see live music and experience that, that kind of vibe. You've talked to like a programmer or a web developer and they're showing you a new thing that they've they've put together and they're all excited about it. And you say, well, okay, that's nice, but um, you know, what about this? And why did you do it that way? And does it do that? And almost inevitably they'll they'll turn to you and they'll go, version two. <laughs> so the movie I had in my head was always version two. I had a lot of plans about how to film it, how to record it, how to put it together. Uh the movie that got made in 2022 is definitely version one. I made a lot of compromises. I didn't get everything done that I wanted to. And so um, I'm hoping that somewhere down the road, there's still a two-day town. And in three years or five years or 10 years, I hope somebody comes along with the resources and the expertise to take the original vision that I have and pick up the story and tell us what happened since then and make two-day town the sequel or two-day movie the sequel where we only going to talk about Bruno and uh, and see what transpires. But right now, uh, I'm happy with what I've done, um, but it was definitely a set of compromises from the original ver vision of the movie. Let me back up a little bit and tell you, when I was a little kid, one day, I was 11 years old, I remember this day with great clarity, and one day, my mother said, I, I want you to stay home from school today. And my siblings all went off to school, and I stayed home. And she said, um, we're going to go see a movie. Now, that getting to go see a movie with just me and my mom was a lot of fun. She, she went out of her way to spend time with each kid. And so getting to do something like that was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, by the way, at the time, I'd been in piano. She'd had me in piano lessons for four years. And I was a you know, adequate but unremarkable kid taking piano lessons. What I really loved to do in those days was read. My library card was my prized possession. And I would read mysteries and science fiction. And the librarian, who knew me by name, had recently given me a book called The Once in the Future King, which is a telling of the King Arthur story in Camelot. So on the day that this happened, uh, you know, my mom knew that I uh, was music. I was taking piano lessons, but I wasn't very musical. I really didn't understand what it meant to make music. But I was really thrilled with this with this book. And my mom loved musicals. On the stage in the theater, she loved to go see musicals. So the movie that she took me to see was Camelot with Richard Harris and Vanessa Redgrave. Um, and uh, this may sound odd, but uh, for an 11 year old kid to go see that movie and just be in enchanted by it uh, is exactly what happened. That movie was a transformative experience to me because for the first time in my young life, I think I started to understand what it meant to be a storyteller and how you take a story and you tell a version of it and you combine elements of, in that case, music and cinematography and acting and you put them together in a way that compels an audience and people, you know, resonate with it and they cry to it or they laugh or they're, they're moved by it. And I, you know, I loved reading stories, but I'd never thought about telling stories in those ways. And my mom and I 
talked about that movie a, a bunch of times uh, after that, both what the movie meant, but also how it got made. And so, I mean, to the extent that I became a storyteller in my life, that movie was the experience that that kicked it all off. And uh, so I, I, at that time, started using my dad's eight millimeter camera, right? No sound, just eight millimeters. Started making little movies with my buddies and they were just silly little things, but we would go out and, and make them. And later on in my early adulthood, when there were camcorders, I would grab a camcorder and go make little movie shorts and things like that. And uh, now in my adult life, I make music videos. They're nothing spectacular, but I have a lot of fun making them. And I, I try to tell a story when I, when I make them. So I had to back up and explain all this to, to explain why it's so important to me in putting Two Day Movie together to try to bring all of those skills together and tell a story that I hope is interesting and comforting and compelling, but that also has something to say. So in addition to Two Day Town and what a wonderful thing that is and some behind the scenes, uh, what else is the message here? So one thing is, and we all know it, but you feel it viscerally, is don't just expect that the thing that you know and love is gonna keep happening year in, year out. You know, we just thought, okay, well, I didn't make Two Day Town or Two Day Movie 20 in 2018, I'll just make it next year. And here we are four years later, and I finally, I, I was fortunate, I was able to, to get around and make it. So, you know, thing one is, is don't just expect that these things are gonna happen. And, and by the way, for Two Day Town itself, as I mentioned, there's still some issues. There's no good guys and bad guys, but there's issues about, you know, how Two Day Town can be held at Lake Del Val. And it's not a foregone conclusion that it's gonna go on forever. And even if those things get resolved, uh, you know, there's people who've been working Two Day Town for the whole time. At some point, there has to be another generation. There has to be another set of people that decide they'll pick it up and do it. And it's all volunteer. Nobody's making any money off of it. So I, it's somewhat long-winded, but in the story of Camelot, in the metaphor that Camelot is, and in the story of Two Day Town, there's a one or two people who have a great idea and they think about how to make that idea happen and how people should conduct themselves in order for that to happen. And might doesn't make right and uh, uh, volunteer and leave no trace. And if I may, uh, government for the people and by the people, right? These are all important things. It's not a foregone conclusion that they will all continue. And if they, and you hope that they do, but if they're going to, it's because people have to care, they have to get involved. And then honestly, there's a, a third thing that's important to me uh, about why I made Two Day Movie at this point and why the story is what it is, which is, okay, so uh, it's not a foregone conclusion and it's gonna go forward. We hope it does, hope's not enough, people have to get involved. But if it doesn't, then I wanted to document this beautiful thing that did happen and just recognize that it came together. And I don't know how many people will understand the illusion here, but don't let it be forgot that once there was a spot. And that's all I can say about that.